everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. In this session, I will be discussing a very important topic in the cardiology that is the cardiac murmurs. So first of all, you need to know that murmur is a Latin word. And what exactly is the definition of the cardiac murmur? So yes, so the murmur it is the, a Latin word. A heart murmur is defined as a prolonged series of audible signals or vibrations right prolonged series of the audible signals or vibrations of varying intensity right of varying intensity that is loudness of varying frequency that is the pitch and of varying configuration and of varying duration right so that is about the definition of a cardiac murmur now this particular cardiac murmurs let me tell you depending upon the duration and as well as depending upon the timing of the cardiac cycle they have been classified as the following so they have been classified as the continuous murmurs systolic murmurs and then diastolic murmurs okay so this will be the description of the cardiac murmurs depending upon the timing at which the timing of the cardiac cycle at which they appear and if you take the continuous murmur continuous murmur is that which appears at s1 right which appears at, at s1 and then it continues through s2 and then it also continues between s2 and s1 what is this s1 and s2 story let me explain you so we have the first heart sound then followed by that we have second heart sound then followed by that again the first heart sound so the first heart sound it is heard or it occurs during isovolumetric contraction phase second heart sound it occurs during isovolumetric relaxation phase and again s1 if you see during isovolumetric contraction phase so between s1 and s2 this is called the systolic phase between s2 and s1 this is called the diastolic phase right this is called the diastolic phase so if the cardiac murmur appears throughout the cardiac cycle that is from s1 and again up to s1 that will be your continuous murmur whereas systolic murmur if you see these are the one which will start at s1 and then end at s2 and accordingly we have the description like early systolic murmur mid systolic murmur late systolic murmur and the continuous murmurs then if you see the description of the diastolic murmurs diastolic murmurs are those which will start at s2 and continue up to s1 again so between s2 and s1 it is a diastolic phase and any murmur which occur between s2 and s1 will be your diastolic murmur now let me discuss in detail about the continuous murmurs first then followed by that let me discuss the systolic and as well as the diastolic murmurs okay so continuous murmur is found in all except
mitral stenosis with mitral regurgitation, patent ductus arteriosus, rupture of sinus of Valsalva, systemic AV fistula. Right. So, if you take the continuous murmurs, what is the definition of the continuous murmur? Right. Continuous murmur, it is the one which starts at S1, right, and it passes through your S2 and it continues up to S1 again. That means it is the murmur which is heard throughout the systole and as well as the diastole. That will be your continuous murmur, right. And there are many clinical conditions where you have the presence of the continuous murmurs. So, continuous murmurs, they are caused by number one, increased flow or continuous murmurs, they are caused by high to low pressure shunts, right? There is a shunt and there will be a blood flow from high pressure area to a low pressure area. And that blood flow which occurs from high pressure to low pressure area will be continuous. And that is the reason why you will listen that particular continuous murmur. And then continuous murmurs secondary to localized arterial obstruction. All that I will discuss. So you take the continuous murmur caused by the increased flow of the blood across the vessels. Number one, you take venous hum right where there is increased flow across the veins in the supraclavicular area and mammary soffel right mammary soffel see what do you understand by this word mammary soffel it is that which occurs in pregnancy in pregnancy the mammary gland require or during pregnancy or during lactation Mammary gland require increased flow of blood. So there is, there will be a continuous flow of the blood across the mammary vessels and with greater intensity and thereby the individual will have a continuous murmur. Then there will be increased velocity of the blood flow across the hemangioma and there will be increased velocity of the blood flow across the vessels in patients with the hyperthyroidism where the individual will have a continuous murmur and the continuous murmur is also caused by blood flow in patients with acute alcoholic hepatitis right acute alcoholic hepatitis and not only that this increased velocity of the flow of blood will also occur in certain neoplasms of the kidney and as well as liver and as well as the bone and that we call it as the hyperemia of neoplasm Right, that we call it as the hyperemia of the neoplasm. And what are the examples of the hyperemia of neoplasm? That includes hepatoma. Number two, renal cell carcinoma. Number three, Pager's disease. Right, number three, Pager's disease. So these are the neoplasms wherein there will be a continuous murmur which is caused by increased flow of the blood across these particular organs. Okay, next. Then followed by that, continuous murmurs secondary to localized arterial obstruction. Now, where all you will have this? You will come across the continuous murmur secondary to localized arterial obstruction in scenarios like coactation of iota, 
right in scenarios like the coactation of iota next in clinical scenario like branch pulmonary stenosis right branched pulmonary artery stenosis see whenever there is an obstruction within an artery or whenever there is narrowing or whenever there is stenosis there is increased turbulence of the blood flow across that stenosis and that increased turbulence will be there during systole and diastole and that is the reason why the individual will have a continuous murmur right and then in patients with carotid occlusion right in patients with carotid occlusion there will be a continuous murmur and in patients with mesenteric occlusion there can be a continuous murmur next in patients with renal occlusion there can be a continuous murmur and as well as in clinical scenarios like femoral occlusion there can be continuous murmur okay so these are all the conditions where you have the continuous murmurs secondary to localized arterial obstruction next now you take the other scenario continuous murmur caused by high to low pressure shunts now there are many clinical conditions let me just give you the examples because they can be asked as a multiple choice question in your exams so first thing is continuous murmur caused by flow of the blood from systemic artery to the pulmonary artery systemic artery is the one is your iota pulmonary artery is a low pressure vessel so the blood flow will be from the iota which is a high pressure vessel to a low pressure vessel that is pulmonary artery and you will come across in scenarios like patent ductus arteriosus iota pulmonary window truncus arteriosus pulmonary atresia anomalous left coronary artery next bronchiectasis and sequestration of the lung so in all these scenarios there is a connection between the systemic artery which is under high pressure to pulmonary artery which is under low pressure right and next scenario is connection between the systemic artery that is iota to the right side of the heart you will come across this in patients with ruptured sinus of valsalva and as well as the coronary artery fistula and what are the conditions where you have left to right atrial shunting that is in patients with the Lutembacher syndrome what is Lutembacher syndrome it is the presence of ASD and mitral stenosis so in patients with mitral stenosis the left atrial pressure is very high and the blood from left atrium enters into right atrium across the ASD throughout systole and diastole and thereby the individual will have a continuous murmur then mitral atresia plus atrial septal defect then in conditions like veno venous shunts veno venous shunts if you see that includes anomalous pulmonary veins and porto systemic shunts so that is about the conditions where you have the continuous murmurs caused by high to low pressure shunts so this is about the etiologies of the continuous murmur so if you see this question Continuous murmur is found in all except mitral stenosis with mitral regurgitation, patent ductus arteriosus, rupture of sinus of valsalva, systemic AV fistula. So let me tell you, in case of mitral stenosis with mitral regurgitation, you don't have a continuous murmur. But whereas in B, C, D, you have the presence of the continuous murmur. Right, you have the presence of continuous murmur. Next. Now, you see the next question. Which condition? following murmur is seen aortic regurgitation asd transposition of the great arteries branch pulmonary artery stenosis so what is the image which has been shown to you it is a continuous murmur right it is a continuous murmur why you can see the vibrations are present in between s1 and s2 that is during systole and in between S2 and S1 that is during diastole. So, which clinical condition you will have this? You will have this in patients with a branch pulmonary artery stenosis. 
So which condition following murmur is seen? Branch pulmonary artery stenosis. Whereas in aortic regurgitation, you have the presence of the early diastolic murmur. Right? Next. Then followed by this. You see this clinical scenario. A 63-year-old man or old male was admitted to the accident and emergency two days after the discharge following an apparent uncomplicated myocardial infarction. Right? He had an uncomplicated MI previously and he got discharged. And two days after the discharge, again, the patient was admitted to the accident and emergency department. And he complained of rapid worsening, shortness of breath over the previous 48 hours, but no further chest pain. He was tachypneic and had a regular pulse of 110 per minute, which proved to be sinus tachycardia. The jugular venous pulse was raised and pansystolic murmur was noted maximal at the left sternal edge. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? See, now the question is about the pansystolic murmur. Right, the question is about the pansystolic murmur. Now, if you see the options that include mitral incompetence, ventricular septal defect, aortic stenosis, Dressler syndrome, further myocardial infarction. So, where do you have the pansystolic murmur? You will have in patients with mitral incompetence, tricuspid incompetence and ventricular septal defect. But you have two options here. Mitral incompetence is there and ventricular septal defect is also there. Then what would be the best answer here? Okay. So, the location of the murmur is also very important. Now, let me discuss about the systolic murmurs and I will also discuss about this particular pan-systolic murmur, right? So, if you take the systolic murmurs, they are the one which are heard between S1 and S2 and out of which if the murmur is heard in the early part of the systole, that will be your early systolic murmur and if the murmur is heard in the mid part of the systole, that will be mid or ejection systolic murmur. Right, that will be mid or ejection systolic murmur and if the murmur is heard in the later part of the systole that we call it as a late ejection systolic murmur and if you take the early systolic murmur you will come across this in patients with acute MR, acute TR and this early systolic murmur is also heard in small VSD. So these are the conditions where you have the early systolic murmur. And if you take the mid or ejection systolic murmur, the mid or ejection systolic murmur is heard in patients with the aortic stenosis. Then in patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy then in patients with pulmonary stenosis right so these are the conditions where you have mid or ejection systolic murmur then if you see the late systolic murmur late systolic murmur it is heard in case of mitral valve prolapse syndrome and tricuspid valve prolapse syndrome, right? In case of MVPS and TVPS, you have the presence of the late systolic murmur. And you need to know, where do you have this pan-systolic murmur? See, our question is about the pan-systolic murmur. And answer in this clinical scenario is ventricular septal defect. I'll explain you. Because pan-systolic murmur, pan-systolic murmur, it is the one which is heard in patients with ventricular septal defect, in patients with mitral regurgitation and in patients with the tricuspid regurgitation. So how do you differentiate this? In patients with ventricular septal defect, right, in patients with the ventricular septal defect, let me tell you, it is a pansystolic murmur and it is heard in the left sternal edge. Right, and there is no radiation of the murmur 
and there is no increase in the intensity of the murmur on inspiration. Whereas mitral regurgitation murmur, this is also a pansystolic murmur, but this will radiate to the axilla, right? But this will radiate to the angle of scapula. That will be your MR murmur. Then if you take the TR murmur, that is tricuspid regurgitation murmur. See tricuspid regurgitation murmur, this is also a pansystolic murmur. Right, this is also a pansystolic murmur, and this is heard in the left sternal edge across fourth or fifth intercostal space. But this particular murmur will increase on inspiration. Right, but this murmur will increase on inspiration. That will be your tricuspid regurgitant murmur. And that increase in intensity of your tricuspid regurgitant murmur, we call this as a de Carvalho sign. So that is about your pansystolic murmurs. But you need to know the grading of the systolic murmurs. Right, the intensity of the murmur that is intensity of the systolic murmur, it is graded from 1 to 6. Okay, so if you see the grading of the systolic murmurs, right, they are graded from 1 to 6. And this particular grading is done or described by Freeman and Levine. Now, so this is called the Levine classification of the systolic murmur. So if you take grade 1 by 6 murmur, it is the faintest murmur. Right, it is the faintest murmur. And that can be heard only with special effort and under optimal conditions. So you can hear that only in a quiet room. Right, that is optimal conditions and you require a close concentration right you require a very close concentration to listen to this particular grade 1 by 6 murmur and if you take the grade 2 by 6 murmur it is a soft or faint murmur right it is a soft or a faint murmur that can be readily detected right that can be readily detected Right, so that will be grade 2 by 6 murmur. And if you take grade 3 by 6 murmur, it is the murmur with moderately loud intensity. Right, moderately loud murmur without thrill. So what do you mean by a thrill? Thrill is a palpable murmur, right? A palpable murmur, we call it as thrill. Then, if you see grade 4 by 6 murmur, it is a very loud murmur that is palpable. Right, a very loud murmur that is palpable and that is the one which is associated with thrill. Right, that is the one which is associated with thrill. So that is what is your grade 4 by 6 murmur. Right, it is a very loud murmur that is palpable that is associated with thrill. And then followed by that, if you see 
ग्रेड फाइव बाई सिक्स मार्मर ग्रेड फाइव बाई सिक्स मार्मर इट इज एन एक्सट्रीमली लाउड मार्मर right it is an extremely loud murmur that can be heard only if edge of the stethoscope is in contact with the steth with the chest right that is heard only if if that is heard only if edge of the stethoscope if it is in contact with the chest that is what is your grade 5 by 6 murmur right and this murmur cannot be heard if the stethoscope is removed from the chest and it is also the murmur which is associated with thrill so what is thrill a palpable murmur then if you take grade 6 by 6 murmur this grade 6 by 6 murmur it is an exceptionally loud murmur right and what is the difference between 5 by 6 and 6 by 6 that is this grade 6 by 6 by 6 murmur which is exceptionally loud murmur that can be heard with a stethoscope which has just removed contact from the chest wall okay so this can be heard with stethoscope even though you have removed contact with the chest and even your grade 6 by 6 murmur it is also accompanied by thrill right it is also accompanied by thrill so that is about your grade 6 by 6 murmur okay so these are the grades of the systolic murmur given by Freeman and Levine. Now, after having discussion, discussed about the systolic murmurs, let me discuss about the diastolic murmurs, right? Before that, you see this clinical question. You see a 67 year old woman who presents with worsening shortness of breath coupled with decreased exercise tolerance. She had rheumatic fever in her adolescence and suffered from essential hypertension. On examination, she has signs which points to a diagnosis of aortic stenosis. Which of the following is not a clinical sign associated with aortic stenosis? Early systolic murmur, crescendo decrescendo murmur, angina, soft A2, healing apex. So, the one which is not favoring your aortic stenosis will be the early systolic murmur just now we have discussed that in case of aortic stenosis the murmur that you have is ejection systolic murmur right which is also called the mid systolic murmur okay so that is about the clinical question related to your aortic stenosis next Okay, so you see this image, this is an image based question. Please tell me what are the conditions where you have this particular murmur? Atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect, patent ductus arteriosus, ruptured sinus of Valsalva. So the condition where you will have this particular type of murmur will be in patients with ventricular septal defect. So what is this? This is a pansystolic murmur. Right, this is a pansystolic murmur. Okay, so pansystolic murmurs, where all you will have, you will have that in patients with VSD, you will have that in patients with MR, right, and you will have that in patients with the TR. These are all the conditions where you have the pansystolic murmur because you can make out very clearly that the murmur is present throughout the systole, which is a pansystolic murmur seen in patients with the VSD, right, and 
you see another important image based question right so this is the image and tell me in which condition you will have this mitral valve prolapse syndrome venous hum coarctation of iota iota pulmonary window see what is that you are able to make out in this particular image that is you have the presence of click in the mid part of the systole and you have a murmur in the later part of the systole so it is like the description is like a mid systolic click with late systolic murmur right with late systolic murmur you will come across this in mitral valve prolapse syndrome in mitral valve prolapse syndrome you have a mid systolic click with late systolic murmur whereas venous hum you have a continuous murmur coarctation of iota you have a continuous murmur iota pulmonary window also you have the presence of the continuous murmur right next you see another image right so this is another image based question so you can observe a murmur which is peaking in the mid part of the systole right so it is like a mid systolic murmur please tell me in which condition you will have this so condition seen all except aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy tricuspid stenosis so mid systolic murmur or ejection systolic murmur you will come across this in aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis and as well as the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy but not in tricuspid stenosis in tricuspid stenosis you will have the presence of the mid diastolic murmur right so in ts you have mdm okay but not mid systolic murmur or but not ejection systolic murmur right and you see the next question a 16 year old male is referred for assessment of hypertension on average his blood pressure is 165 by 85 mm of mercury with radio femoral delay there is a mid systolic murmur maximum at the aortic area and radiating to the back clinical findings and ecg are compatible with left ventricular hypertrophy what is the most likely underlying pathology hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy congenital aortic stenosis coarctation of aorta patent ductus arteriosus atrial septal defect so if you take one important point that is the radio femoral delay right if you take one important point that is radio femoral delay that is suggestive of the coarctation of aorta and in coarctation of aorta cvr depending upon the cvrt of the stenosis you can have either a mid systolic murmur or you can have the continuous murmur also right so this is about a clinical scenario related to your coarctation of aorta where you have the presence of the radio femoral delay okay and why is this radio femoral delay because the coarctation most commonly it is present distal to the left subclavian artery so the blood flow to the upper limbs will be adequate but blood flow to the lower limbs will be reduced and that is the one which makes the individual to have a radio femoral delay so if you see the next important clinical scenario we have a 35 year old man is brought to the casualty with sudden syncopal episodes while playing with his grandchildren he is currently alert and describes occasional substernal heaviness and shortness of breath his lungs have bibasilar rals and blood pressure is 120 by 80 mm of mercury which is the classical finding expected in this patient harsh ejection systolic murmur with soft s2 harsh ejection systolic murmur with wide split s2 harsh hollow systolic murmur with soft s2 harsh pan systolic murmur with loud s2 so now this is a clinical scenario of the aortic stenosis right because 75 year old man presented with syncopal episodes on exertion right and what is that exertional events exertional events is like while playing with his grandchildren and the individual is also having 
bibasilar heaviness or bibasilar rals which is suggestive of the development of the congestive heart failure that is the pulmonary edema and these are the points in favor of the aortic stenosis and along with that there is also presence of a murmur I mean in this what is expected there is or there will be a harsh ejection systolic murmur with soft S2 that is the characteristic murmur in patients with aortic stenosis right so why did you come to the conclusion of aortic stenosis number one elderly individual number two two important manifestations one the syncopal episodes on exertion and two development of congestive heart failure and one more substernal heaviness right substernal heaviness okay so all these points are in favor of the aortic stenosis next now so in aortic stenosis you have the presence of the harsh ejection systolic murmur with soft s2 next now coming to the diastolic murmurs that was the discussion about your systolic murmurs let me discuss about the diastolic murmurs see diastolic murmurs are those which are heard between s2 and s1 and this diastole we divide that into the early part of the diastole then mid part of the diastole and the late diastolic phase so if you take early diastolic murmur you will have that in patients with aortic regurgitation and the pulmonary regurgitation and mid diastolic murmur it is heard in patients with mitral stenosis and the tricuspid stenosis the late diastolic murmur you will have that in caricombs murmur right i'll discuss about this caricombs murmur in detail and then even the austin flint murmur so this caricombs murmur and as well as the austin flint murmur they are mid to late diastolic murmurs right both of them i'll discuss in detail so if you see a question now early diastolic murmur it is heard in ventricular septal defect atrial septal defect mitral stenosis aortic regurgitation so it is in aortic regurgitation where you have the presence of the early diastolic murmur right and the murmur of aortic regurgitation which is an early diastolic murmur if you see the description of the character it is described as a decrescendo murmur right it is described as decrescendo murmur right so de what is decrescendo murmur it is an early diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation right early diastolic murmur of aortic regurgitation so what do you mean by the word decrescendo murmur it is a murmur which will be decreasing in intensity from the start of the murmur then crescendo decrescendo murmur so crescendo decrescendo murmur that is crescendo increasing decrescendo decreasing so increasing decreasing right so which we call it as also a diamond shaped murmur right diamond shaped murmur and you have this crescendo decrescendo murmur in patients with the aortic stenosis and as well as the pulmonary stenosis right where you have the presence of crescendo decrescendo murmur next so this is about the description about the configuration or the shape of the murmurs i'll show you one important question like match the following with the murmurs and different clinical scenarios so you need to match list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answer using the code given below the list so list 1 tells you about the auscultatory finding and list 2 will be the cardiac conditions so you take list 1 wide fixed split in second heart sound second option continuous or machinery murmur third option muffled heart sounds fourth option wide variable split in the second heart sound and you take the respective clinical conditions pulmonary hypertension atrial septal defect patent ductus arteriosus pericardial effusion
So what is the condition where you have the wide fixed split in second heart sound? That will be the atrial septal defect. Right? That will be atrial septal defect. So your A in atrial septal defect. Continuous murmur or machinery murmur, you will have that in patent ductus arteriosus. That is B, it corresponds to your 3. Wide vary, muffled heart sounds, muffled heart sounds, you will have that in pericardial effusion. Right? C, it is connected to 4. Wide variable split in second heart sound, you will have that in patients with the pulmonary hypertension. So, if you see the options here, the correct option is B, right? So, you will have these type of match the following type of questions in the upcoming exams, right? Next, you take another important clinical scenario. A 49 year old woman presents with increasing shortness of breath on exertion developed over the past three months. She has no chest pain or cough and has noticed no ankle swelling. On examination, blood pressure is 158 by 61 millimeters of mercury. Pulse is regular at 88 beats per minute and there are crackles at both the lung bases. There is decrescendo diastolic murmur at the left sternal edge. What is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? Aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis and then the tricuspid regurgitation. So, in this individual, you have the presence of decrescendo diastolic murmur. And even if you take the pulse pressure, right, the pulse pressure is also increased. Right, the pulse pressure is also increased. So, increased pulse pressure and decrescendo diastolic murmur. Where do you have that? You have that in patients with aortic regurgitation. Whereas in aortic stenosis, you have the presence of mid systolic murmur or ejection systolic murmur. Whereas in mitral regurgitation, you have the presence of the pan systolic murmur. And in patients with mitral stenosis, you have the presence of the mid diastolic murmur. And in tricuspid regurgitation, it is the pan systolic murmur. Okay. So this is about the various murmurs in different clinical conditions. Right. And the clinical scenario which has been given to you is the clinical scenario of the aortic regurgitation. Right. Next. Now, let me discuss about the named murmurs. Caricom murmur is seen in or it is heard in severe mitral stenosis, acute rheumatic carditis, pure aortic regurgitation, severe pulmonary hypertension. So, Caricom's murmur, it is seen in or it is heard in the acute rheumatic carditis. But I will explain you what is Caricom's murmur and what is its mechanism, I will explain you. And Caricom's murmur, it is also heard in clinical scenarios like ventricular septal defect and it is also heard in the clinical scenarios like patent ductus arteriosus. So even in VSD and as well as PDA, you have the presence of this particular Caricom's murmur. Now, what is this particular Caricom's murmur? So, you see this question. Caricom's murmur, which is a false statement, delayed diastolic murmur seen in rheumatic fever, can be associated with aortic regurgitation and it is a low pitched murmur. So, which is the wrong statement here? Can be associated with aortic regurgitation is a wrong statement. Right? Caricom's murmur, which is seen in case of acute rheumatic fever, is associated with mitral regurgitation. So, what did I tell you about the Caricom's murmur? It is a late systolic murmur. Right? It is a late systolic murmur. And this is an additional murmur. Right? This is an additional murmur that you will hear in patients with mitral regurgitation. Right? This is an additional murmur that you will hear in patients with mitral regurgitation. Actually, in patients with mitral regurgitation, you have the presence of the pan systolic murmur. Right? Actually, in patients with mitral regurgitation, the murmur that you will have is a pan systolic murmur. Then why did you why do you get this late systolic murmur? 
See in mitral regurgitation, as you observe here, during the left ventricular systole, the blood from left ventricle will regurgitate into the left atria. So thereby, what will happen to the LA volume? Right, the LA volume is increased. Why? Because when the ventricle is in systole, the atria is in diastole. And during the diastolic phase, left atria will receive the blood from the pulmonary veins and as well as regurgitant blood. So that is the reason why the LA volume is increased. And this increased volume of the blood has to pass through the mitral valve. Right, this increased volume of the blood, it has to pass through the mitral valve, which is a normal valve area. Right, that increased volume of the blood, it has to pass through the normal valve area. So, when this increased quantity of the blood is passing through a normal valve area, during your caricoms murmur, it is mid to late diastolic murmur. I am sorry. So, now please remember here. So, now why is that you will have this late diastolic murmur? That is because when this large quantity of the LA volume blood, when it is passing through a normal mitral valve area during the diastole of the ventricle, it will create a turbulence across the valve even during diastole, resulting in mid to late diastolic murmur. That is what is your caricoms murmur. Next. So, you see this question. Caricoms murmur, which is the false statement, can be associated with AR is wrong. Associated with acute MR is a correct statement. Right? Next. Now, the next question is, what is correct about the Austin Flint murmur? So, Austin Flint murmur, it is also a named murmur. And where do you come across this and what is its characteristic features? Soft low pitched mid diastolic murmur, soft low pitched mid systolic murmur, harsh high pitch mid diastolic murmur, harsh high pitch mid systolic murmur. So let me discuss about the Austin Flint murmur. So Austin Flint murmur, it has the features almost similar to that of the Caricombs murmur. That is, it is also a mid to late diastolic murmurs. Right, it is also a murmur which is mid to late diastolic murmur. And this is a soft pitched murmur. Right, this is a soft pitched murmur. And it is associated with aortic regurgitation. Right, it is associated with aortic regurgitation. And why does this Austin Flint murmur occurs in aortic regurgitation? So, now, you see in case of aortic regurgitation, you can observe the blood from the aorta regurgitate back into the ventricle. So, when the blood from the aorta is regurgitating back into the ventricle, it will hit the anterior mitral leaflet. Right, it will hit the anterior mitral leaflet. So, when it hits the anterior mitral leaflet, anterior mitral leaflet, it moves towards, right, anterior mitral leaflet, it moves towards the posterior mitral leaflet. So, thereby, right, thereby, what will happen to the mitral valve area? Right, thereby what will happen to the mitral valve area? Mitral valve area, it becomes narrowed. Right, mitral valve area is narrowed. So when mitral valve area is narrowed, the blood from the left atrium enters into left ventricle across the narrowed area during the left ventricular diastole. And thereby, you will get an additional murmur 
which is a soft pitch murmur and it's a delayed diastolic murmur right so i'll repeat it again in aortic regurgitation what will happen is the blood from aorta is regurgitating back and that jet will hit the anterior mitral leaflet and anterior mitral leaflet will move towards the posterior mitral leaflet so thereby what will happen to the valve area valve area is narrowed so when the valve area is narrowed when the blood is moving from left atrium to left ventricle during the diastole the blood it has to pass through the narrowed mitral valve area during diastole and there will be a turbulence which is created across the valve during diastole and that will result in a delayed diastolic soft pitched murmur right which is an austin flint murmur so if you take the murmurs in aortic regurgitation the typical murmur of aortic regurgitation is what it is an early diastolic murmur and this early diastolic murmur it is a high pitched blowing decrescendo diastolic murmur so this early diastolic murmur right this is a high pitched murmur and it's a blowing decrescendo murmur right and where is this particular early diastolic murmur is being heard this early diastolic murmur it is being heard in the second or third intercostal space right or particularly it is heard in the third intercostal space across the left sternal edge because the blood is regurgitating from the aortic area into the left ventricle and the another murmur in case of aortic regurgitation is austin flint murmur right austin flint murmur which is a mid to late diastolic murmur right mid to late diastolic murmur and this austin flint murmur it is a low pitched murmur right this is a low pitched murmur okay and it's a diastolic murmur and one more additional murmur you will have in aortic regurgitation is mid systolic ejection murmur right that is ejection systolic murmur so why do you have this ejection systolic murmur in aortic regurgitation see ejection systolic murmur is a characteristic murmur of aortic stenosis but you will have an additional functional murmur in aortic regurgitation also why because in aortic regurgitation the left ventricular end diastolic volume increases right why because during diastole of the left ventricle you will get the blood from the left atrium and you will get the blood from even aorta also so left ventricular end diastolic volume increases so large quantity of the blood it has to pass through the normal aortic valve area so when the large quantity of the blood is passing through the normal aortic valve area then there will be a turbulence which is created across the valve in the mid part of the systole resulting in a mid systolic murmur right and it is a functional murmur right it is a functional systolic murmur right it's not a true murmur it is because a large volume of the blood is passing through the aortic valve right so this is about your austin flint murmur seen in aortic regurgitation and these are all the various murmurs of the aortic regurgitation and the next important question is graham steel's murmur is heard in pulmonary stenosis pulmonary regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation tricuspid stenosis so you take this graham steel's murmur this is also a diastolic murmur right even this graham steel murmur this is also right this is also a diastolic murmur and where is it heard it is audible along the left sternal border 
right it is audible along the left sternal border and it is heard in patients with pulmonary regurgitation right it is heard in patients with pulmonary regurgitation in patients with pulmonary hypertension right in patients with pulmonary hypertension okay and in pulmonary hypertension what happens because of increase in pulmonary artery pressure some of the blood from the pulmonary artery may leak into the right ventricle right some of the blood from the pulmonary artery may leak into the right ventricle resulting in an early diastolic murmur and that will be your gram steels murmur and this gram seals murmur if you see the character of the murmur it is a high pitched decrescendo murmur right it is a high pitched decrescendo murmur and it is loud during inspiration right it is loud during inspiration so that is about your graham steels murmur right which is in a diastolic murmur in pulmonary regurgitation next so which is the correct statement about graham steels murmur among the options given to you graham steels murmur which is heard in pulmonary regurgitation secondary to pulmonary hypertension it is a high pitched diastolic murmur which is a decrescendo murmur right that is from higher intensity it will be reducing to a lower intensity and that is what is your decrescendo murmur and one more named murmur is the retents murmur retents murmur is seen in av block mitral stenosis aortic stenosis the aortic regurgitation so retents murmur it is a mid diastolic murmur right or it is mid to late diastolic murmur right it is mid to late diastolic murmur and where is it heard it is heard in patients with complete av block right it is heard in patients with the complete atrioventricular heart block and this particular retents murmur it is best heard at the apex of the heart right it is best heard at the apex and this may be slightly confused with the mitral stenosis also and in complete heart block what will happen there can be closure of the av valves during the atrial systole so the blood has to pass from atria to ventricle with the turbulence or in turbulence and that will create your mid diastolic murmur okay so retents murmur it is seen in patients with the av block so if you take all the named murmurs caricoms murmur right it is heard in acute rheumatic fever austin flynn murmur seen in aortic regurgitation graham seals murmur right heard in patients with pulmonary regurgitation retents murmur right seen in complete av block right docks murmur seen in left anterior descending artery stenosis right millwheel murmur it is heard in patients with air emboli right patients with air emboli and the next important named murmur is means lerman scratch so this means lerman scratch it is heard in patients with hyperthyroidism
right so this is another named barber and another important named barber is cruel hair bomb gotten murmur right cruel hair bomb gotten murmur so this cruel hair bomb gotten murmur it is heard in patients with portal hypertension right it is heard in patients with portal hypertension so this is about your named murmurs in the individuals with different clinical scenarios now you see a clinical scenario a 56 year old man presents to your clinic with symptoms of the exertional chest tightness which is relieved by rest you request an ecg which reveals a patient had a first degree heart block which of the following heart sound abnormalities is typically seen in first degree heart block right so the next topic i will be discussing about the heart sounds let me tell you in patients with first degree heart block there will be a prolonged pr interval so in patients with prolonged pr interval you have the presence of the soft s1 right so this is about the heart sounds question i'll be discussing heart sounds in detail in the next topic so this will be about your cardiac murmurs continuous murmur commonly seen in patients with patent ductus arteriosus systolic murmurs you have pan systolic early mid and late systolic then diastolic murmurs where you have early mid and late diastolic murmurs so with this i'll wind up this important topic that is the cardiac murmurs thank you very much